Hey, what is up you guys? This is Rob and honestly, I want to talk to you guys about the new Toyota Tacoma. So here's the thing. If you're new to the channel, I actually own a 2022 Tacoma TRD Off-Road. And as you probably already know, we do have the fourth generation Tacoma just coming out now for the 2024 models. I've actually only seen one on the street so far. It's honestly, I don't think it's a bad truck. You know, I was never part of the anti-new technology crowd. You know, I always find it kind of exciting, honestly, when cars are trying something new and, you know, we see the manufacturers finally making some generations with some drastic model changes. So I'm, I honestly am on the uh, fourth generation Tacoma wagon. Probably won't be buying one because I'm honestly pretty content with my third generation. But I know that some people are very against the fourth generation Tacoma. So with that, I know that the latest news has been having them absolutely frothing at the mouths. All right, guys, so if you guys didn't know, I'm actually working fp &A, So being that I do, I love looking at comparisons and forecasting and all those kind of things. So I was pretty happy to see that the sales reports for mid-size pickups has been released. And in doing so, I was able to see how did the Tacoma do for Q1 2024 versus Q1 2023. Now, remember, guys, Q1 2023 were the third generation of Tacomas being sold. Q1 2024 are the fourth generation Tacoma. So keep that in mind. So essentially we are looking at a straight up third gen versus fourth gen sales numbers. So let's get into this. Q1 2023, we have around 53,500 third generation Tacoma sold. So these were 2023 models. Q1 2024, we have around 21,500 fourth generation Tacoma sold. So this is actually a near 60% decrease and Tacoma sold when you compare to quarters. These aren't the best numbers. It is though worth noting that the Tacoma still narrowly manages to edge out the second place mid-size pickup, the Nissan Frontier, in terms of most you know mid-size trucks sold in that quarter. So naturally, everyone is so quick to jump on all the reasons why the Tacoma is not doing this too well. So I actually wanted to give some of my own perspective again as a third generation Tacoma owner from what I've seen on the forums, the Facebook groups, just out on the street when I talk to other people about it. So I want to kind of give my own insight on why I think these sales numbers are so low. I'll start with some of the less obvious things or I should say less talked about things. Then we'll go on to probably the, one of the bigger and main things. So let's talk about the economy a little bit, all right? Economy is not doing too great right now, especially compared to last year Q1. And due to this, you know, interest rates are high. People are losing their jobs. People don't have lost spare cash. People are just holding on to their cars. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but the car market as a whole is going coming down. It's turning back into a buyer's market, which is the result of, you know, cars just not selling. It's good for us, you know, bad for the car manufacturers. Even the used car market is finally taking a good hit. It's kind of insane to watch, really. So it's a general rule that if you buy a new vehicle, you usually don't buy the first or second model year. For some people, it's just the first model year because being that something all new, there's an expectation there will be some bugs and kinks that need to be worked out. And usually the hope is that by the time we're at the minimum in the second year, those kinks will have been worked out. You know, a lot of people aren't trusting the new Tacoma because instead of the natural aspirated six cylinder engine that it had for a good while, it's finally switching to a four cylinder turbo engine. Now, to me, this makes perfect sense because if you look at the new Tundras, they do have a you know turbocharged you know six cylinder. So to me, it just made perfect sense because they're not gonna put that same engine into a Tacoma. And when they're trying to move into the turbocharger stuff, they're not gonna keep in their natural aspirated six cylinder for the Tacoma. To me, it just made perfect sense. I understood why they did it. However, for a lot of people, they don't like that, which is perfectly okay. You know, so there's a chance that this is kind of spilling over into new potential Tacoma owners who might see this and think, you know, maybe, maybe I should hold off on that. For some people, the looks are pretty polarizing, which I get it. You know, Toyota, they've been going towards a sort of a more futuristic, you know, cutting edge look with their vehicles. And it's not my favorite, but I don't think it's the worst, but a lot of people do. You know, they prefer the more, you know, classic, style of the third generation Tacoma, for example, where it just looks like a solid truck. You know, just a truck, not a, no frills, no fancy stuff. It looks like a good old basic truck that still looks cool in its own way, especially when you start modding it up. 
So as someone who has had, you know, two vehicles, both a 2015 Mustang GT and a 2021 Supra, when they were still pretty new, uh, you know, to the scene, I can kind of understand this point that I was thinking about. The aftermarket support just isn't quite there yet. You know, we're still at that point where everything that's coming out is sort of experimental. You know, you might buy it and then you find out that there's something up with it. So then the manufacturer will release a new batch in like six months where they fix whatever issue was I was plaguing all the first time adopters. You know, there's a lot of guinea picking going on when you're buying the first year of a vehicle. So I definitely get that some people don't want me to guinea pig, especially when they want to mod them up. You know, they don't want to buy new suspension for their brand new Tacoma, install it, and then it turns out that there's some weird issue that now the manufacturer is going to have to go ahead and fix. Then either figure out how they're going to get this new revised version of, uh, for example, say a shock and spring assembly to those first adopters or just offer them a discount or what. Some people, some new owners, they just won't want to deal with that. So I can also understand them having some hesitancy into jumping into an all new platform for this. When you talk to a lot of people, they're gonna say that the biggest reason is the price and I actually do agree with them in a way. So here's the thing. I think that Toyota is a stellar company, reliability wise, you know, engineering wise, I think they are absolutely stellar. But I think they're getting a little complacent. I think they're trying to up the prices of their vehicles and the expectation that will say, well, it's supposed to depend on reliable. So we'll go ahead and I'll spend a 10 or $15,000 more for your Toyota vehicle versus the competition that might not be as great. I think that they, I think they went a little bit overboard and because of that, people are flocking to the competition that will be a decent amount cheaper with all the same bells and whistles. Cause I know that we like to have this, you know, image that everyone buys their vehicles and they keep them for 200,000 miles. But Let's face it, a lot of people who own their vehicles, I mean, honestly, myself included usually, for only about three to five years. So you can buy the competition and you're probably not even gonna own it when some of those issues arise from it that you definitely wouldn't have had if you had gone Toyota. You know what I mean? You know, I bought vehicles where I knew that after 50 or 60,000 miles, I was probably gonna end up having some costly, you know, maintenance and repairs, but then I sold it of when I was only at like 30,000 miles, so it didn't really matter. You know, I think that there are some truck owners who were, who are looking at it in this, you know, viewpoint. And because of that, they said, you know what, I'll just go and I'll try, you know, the Frontier, I'll try to Colorado, I'll just try Jeep Gladiator, all those kind of things. And I think that's something that, you know, Toyota really has to consider, especially when pricing this out. I mean, I know, yes, everything is more expensive. I believe the cheapest Civic you can buy now, like the base base model is about $23,000. But I think that their price is still a little too high. So like I'm looking at it right now, the cheapest Tacoma you can buy, 31.5. On service level, that's not too bad. But, you know, let's also think about it, right? Some people, they don't want to have said, you know, they spent all this money on a truck just to have only gotten the base model. That's a mental thing too. You know, you... I'm not saying that this is a bad base model. You know, it's not like it probably has roll up windows and the AM FM cassette player or anything like that. But for some people, you know, they just, they don't want to pay so much money and know that they didn't even get a decent model. I'd imagine that for the third generation, the tier D sport and the tier D off-road are probably one of the more popular, uh, you know, lines that were sold of the Tacoma, mainly because they were kind of in a nice middle point, right? They weren't like the pro, which were super expensive, but they definitely had a bit more than if you bought just the base model SR5. So then we look here, let's see, tier D off-road, let's see, so that's the IMAX, here we go, it's normal tier D off-road, cheapest one, 41.8. My Tacoma with all the bells and whistles, my tier D off-road was about 44. So I probably have been paying about 52, 53 probably for my own off-road if I were buying a 2024 for all the off-road with all the bells and whistles. You know, they do have a lot of nice options, but it's just, do people want to pay this much money? Are people going to be willing to pay over $45,000, $50,000 for a Tacoma? And it won't even be the top model. I mean, looking here, Tier D Pro, 63.9. That's a lot of money for a mid-sized truck. That is a lot. So I really don't blame people for not, you know, wanting to, you know, jump in and pay such an exorbitant price for a Tacoma. You know, it is unfortunate. 
So that's just my thinking, guys, for why I think the Tacoma hasn't been selling well. I, I think it's a solid vehicle. You know, I do think the price tag, though, is definitely going to hurt it. But they might actually start picking up on sales for Q2, Q3, Q4. Because like I said, you know, we're going into a buyer's market. I'm going off MSRP because, unfortunately, it's been kind of the norm that you're going to get stuff from mainly around MSRP the past few years. I think we're going to get back to the point, though, where someone will be able to get, like, a, their tier D off-road for maybe a couple thousand dollars off of MSRP, and for them, that will be enough. I think as we get back into the age of haggling for cars, we might see these sales start picking up. That's just my opinion, though, guys. I want to what do you guys think, guys? Please, all right? Let me know what you guys think, and if... You know, you think there is any real hope for the Forbes Center in Tacoma, and what do you think it is? And with that, guys, this is Rob, and have a good one.